Mom, from where did this baby plant came? This is a seedling. The seeds germinate and grow into a seedling, then into a plant. Can a new plant grow from other parts of the plant? Yes, of course. Let me tell you about that. In some plants, reproduction takes place through parts such as root, stem, or leaf. In sweet potato, the roots produce buds which grow into a new plant under suitable conditions. Plants such as potato, onion, and ginger, a new plant grows from the buds of underground stem. Many plants such as rose, sugar cane, money plant, etc., grow from stem. Let me tell you how. Cut a part of stem and put it in the soil. After few days, roots come out and the stem part grows into a plant. In bryophyllum, small buds are formed on the leaf margin. These buds drop from the leaf and grow into new plant. It's time for an activity. Take a potato and observe it carefully. You will observe that several buds or eyes are present on the potato. Ask an elder to cut a piece of potato having at least one bud. Place this piece of potato in damp soil. You will observe within a few days, bud starts to grow and slowly develops into a small plant. Most of the plants grow from seeds. Seeds are formed inside the fruits. When seeds fall on the ground, new plants develop from them under favorable conditions. Some common examples of plants which grow from seeds are tomato, okra, also called ladies' fingers, wheat, rice, rich gourd, peas, etc. Let us know about the structure of a seed. A seed has three main parts. These are seed coat, seed leaves or cotyledons and embryo. Seed coat is the outer covering of the seed which protects it from drying and germs. Inside the seed coat, one or two seed leaves or cotyledons are present. Between these seed leaves, a baby plant is present. This baby plant is also known as an embryo. An embryo consists of two main parts, a baby shoot and a baby root. When a seed gets right amount of water, air and proper temperature, it starts to grow into a seedling or young plant. This process is called germination. If anything out of water, air and warmth is missing, seed does not germinate. Dear, do you know that the cotyledons of a seed contain stored food which is utilized by the developing seedling for its growth? Let us do an activity to understand the conditions required for germination. Take some gram seeds separately in three petri dishes. Label these dishes as A, B and C. Keep the seeds of petri dish A in moist cotton at room temperature in an open dish. Maintain the moisture for a few days. Keep the seeds of petri dish B without water in an open dish at room temperature. Keep the seeds of petri dish C in moist cotton in a refrigerator. After 4 to 5 days, you will observe that only the seeds in dish A show germination. This is because the seeds in dish A get air, water and warmth needed for their germination. On the other hand, as in the dish B, moisture is missing and in dish C, warmth is missing. Thus, the seeds in these two dishes will not germinate. A plant generally produces a large number of seeds. If all the seeds fall under the mother tree, seedlings will not get enough amounts of sunlight, water, space and nutrients to grow. To get enough sunlight, air, nutrients and space to grow seeds should be dispersed away from the mother plant. Wind, water and animals are some common agents of seeds dispersal. Seeds of cotton plant are very light when dry. So, these seeds are easily carried away by wind to distant places. Heptate seeds, madar seeds, etc. are some other examples of such seeds. Seeds of plants which grow along the banks of the rivers 
are seas or dispersed by water. Coconut has fibrous outer covering or husk which helps it to float on water and be carried away from mother plant. Lotus is another example. Seed such as xanthium, tiger nail have hooks or spikes by which they stick to our clothes or to the body of some animals. This is how they are carried away from the mother tree. The plants which are grown in fields to get food and other useful things are called crops. Crops are of three types. These are food crop, for example, wheat, rice, maize, potato, etc. Oil producing crops like mustard, sunflower, peanut, soybean, etc. Fiber crops like cotton, jute, hemp, etc. Crops which grow in summer season are called kharif crops. Examples of kharif crops are rice, maize, jowar, bajra, etc. Similarly, wheat, gram, mustard, etc. are grown in winter season and are examples of rubby crops. Tips to grow healthy crops are The crop to be grown should be selected on the basis of type of soil found in that area. Farmers should add adequate amount of manure and fertilizers to the soil to make it fertile. The seeds should be of good quality. Adequate amount of water should be provided at different stages. Insecticides and pesticides should be sprayed to protect the crops from pests and diseases. Weeds should be removed from crop field. After harvesting, the crop should be protected from moisture and small animals like insects, rats, squirrels, birds, etc. Let us summarize. Production of young ones of its own kind is known as reproduction. A seed needs air, water and suitable temperature to germinate. When the seed germinates, it gives rise to a new baby plant known as seedling. The process of spreading seeds to different places away from the mother plant is known as dispersal of seeds. Dispersal can be done by wind, water, animals or even by self-explosion. There are three main types of crops, food crops, oil producing crops and fiber crops. Summer season crops are known as kharif crops and winter season crops are known as rabi crops.